Hey everybody, welcome to the Build Young, Grow Wealthy podcast. My name is Walida Shri. In today's episode, we are going to break down the book Six Months to Six Figures by Peter Vu. Without further ado, let's get into this. Research done by a man named Thomas Stanley discovered that there are only four groups of people. The first type, 3% are wealthy, having $2 million or more of assets. The second type is 27% are financially comfortable, having a successful business or job, can buy a house and a car, and can take a year off of work without going into debt. The third type, 55% are living paycheck to paycheck, people that have more expenses than income and uses debt as a way to buy things. And the fourth type, 15% are further in debtors. These are people sinking deeper into debt every month. The author Peter Vu starts the book by saying that we need to first find out the hidden opportunity. You should always be looking for how you can bring value to the marketplace. But in order to bring that value, you must first enhance your skills. The best way to enhance your skills is to learn something new every day that will help you to reach your goals. You need to become so great at what you do that whatever price you ask, whoever you're asking to pay you will pay you. So that's pretty much what the hidden opportunity is. It's making yourself so valuable that they'll have to pay you because nobody else can do the job. Now, the next thing he wants us to focus on is mastery versus information overload. Mastery is important, but we must be cautious about overloading ourselves with information that is not pertinent to our growth. Learn one or two skills at a time until you achieve mastery. After you consume the information, you need to check and make sure you learned it and you retain it. So it is important that after you consume information, you check for understanding. And the way that you can do this is by challenging yourself to teach it to other people. One of the biggest reasons why I started this podcast and also my YouTube channel is to immediately teach what I learned. And I challenge you to do it as well. Maybe you don't want to start a podcast or a YouTube channel, but maybe you have a significant other, a spouse, or a friend that you can talk to to be able to share the knowledge that you learned. That way, not only do they learn something new, but you also make sure you learn it as well. Developing a new skill takes time. It is a lifelong process. Now, Peter Vuk's Six Steps to Six Figures, which he said you can acquire this six figures over six months. So what I'm gonna do now is dive into those steps. The first thing that you need to do is you need to have absolute clarity on what it is that you wanna do. And here are some questions that you may wanna write down to go back later and answer. The first one is, people are motivated by either pain or pleasure. So what are you seeking for in your quest of what you're trying to do? The next question is, what are three lessons that life has taught you so far? Number three, what are you good at? Number four, what can you become the best in the world? So this goes back to that hidden opportunity. You want to become the best in the world because only the best in the world can negotiate the prices for what they deserve. Number five, what are your values? Number six, what's important to you? Maybe at the top of your list, it's family, or maybe it's your career, or maybe it's taking care of your parents. Whatever it is, you need to make sure you have a clear idea of what it is you are working towards so that when you reach that goal, you feel accomplished. Because if you work hard at something, but there's no end goal, trust me, it is going to be an empty feeling. The next and last question is, what would you do if you had $10 million? For some of you, $10 million may seem like a lot of money. For others of you, $10 million may seem like it's not enough. Regardless of what you believe $10 million is, I want you to consider what would you do if you had $10 million? The next thing that Peter Vu tells us is that we need to learn how to increase our confidence account. Your confidence is the most important account you will ever manage. And here's a quote from the book. Quote, if you don't have confidence, you will always find a way to lose. End quote. Now here is a formula that successful people use. First, they make a decision, they take action, and then they determine how they would feel after it's all said and done. The formula that the average person or most unsuccessful people use is first they'll determine how they feel, then they'll take action before they make a decision. Here are some steps if you struggle in the confidence area to help you to boost your confidence. Number one, when making choices, ask yourself, will it help or hurt your confidence? Number two, don't be afraid of challenges. Think about every time you overcame something difficult and ask yourself, did it make you stronger? Number three, be consistent. 
There will be plenty of days that you won't feel like doing the thing that you need to do in order to become successful, which is why you shouldn't make decisions based on how you feel. Being consistent will create a habit, and if you begin to create good habits, they will be hard to break, therefore allowing you to be consistent. So what are three things in your life that demand consistency? And what would your life look like in six months if you were consistent? Number four, anything that you want to be great at will require repetition and deliberate practice. Number five, have courage. Fear is very paralyzing in anything that you do. So the only way to overcome it is to have courage. Number six, stop trying to get opinions and advice from everyone you know. Lastly, surround yourself with other confident people. You become the sum total of the five people that you spend the most time with. So make sure that the people you spend the most time with has confidence. We then need to learn how to shift our circle of influence. Networking is important if we want to elevate in life. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, it's not what you know, it's who you know. The author of Peter Vood gives six benefits of networking. The first one is sharing and gaining knowledge by swapping information with the people that you meet. Number two, you will be positioned for opportunities. Number three, you increase your income and your influence, therefore helping you to reach your goals faster. Number four, shortening the learning curve. You can choose to learn through trial and error, which can be very beneficial as long as you learn from your mistakes. But it would also be wise to learn from others' experiences as well. Number five, the more you know who you are, the more your name will pop up if they need someone with your expertise. Number six, the more you talk to people you don't know, the more it will increase your confidence. The next thing that Peter Vug talks about in one of his six steps is consistent energy and motivation. So this is going to be your inner drive. Quote, those who don't make time for exercise will eventually have to make time for illness. End quote. Edward Stanley. There are three sources of energy that you need to nourish every day. Physical, emotional, and mental. The three parts to gaining physical energy, you need to practice eating a good nutrition, getting plenty of exercise, and getting plenty of sleep. The way to nourish your emotional energy is you must practice using positive and uplifting emotions such as love, courage, and focus, to name a few. But you must let go of all other negative emotions such as hostility, frustration, and inconsistency, to name a few. Lastly, to increase your mental energy, you need to craft a morning routine. These are things that you're going to do every single morning. You're going to read a good book for 30 minutes a day, journal, listen or watch things that make you successful, write down and organize your goals, focus on gratitude, keep a good circle of friends, and stay away from toxic people. And then one of the last things he says in his six steps is that we need to create intentional results rituals. Quote, the amount of stress you have in your life is in direct correlation to the lack of rituals you have in place. End quote. Dave Taberski. There are three types of rituals that you need to create for your life. You need to create a mindset ritual, a health ritual, and a productivity ritual, which I'm not going to talk about in this podcast, but you do need to figure out a ritual that you can do for each of those every single day. Lastly, you need to learn how to go against the grain. What this means is that you are going to take few opinions from people, especially the people that don't live or have what you desire. This goes for parents, siblings, aunties, uncles, grandparents. It doesn't matter. If the people who are giving you advice, if the advice they're given does not seem to benefit them, why would you take that advice? If the person who's giving you money advice is bad with money, don't take the money advice from them. Instead of being disrespectful and just writing them off, you can listen, but it's really just putting it through one ear and let it release out the other ear because it's not going to be really beneficial to you. The next thing you need to do is stop trying to be normal. Normal people get normal results. And currently, the trend is literally working yourself to death. Lastly, find out what makes you unique and stand apart from others. Improve your gift and skills and learn how to capitalize on that because each of us have those things that are unique and individual to us. So it is my hope that at least from this book or one of my podcasts or something I've said that you try to get yourself as far away from normal and as close to unique as possible by the time you finally step into your purpose and fully go all in. So what's your plan to make six figures in six months? I want you to leave me a comment. If you are new to the podcast, welcome. Make sure you subscribe for more great content. If you are a returning listener, be sure to share this episode with a friend. 
And that's all I have for now. Until next time, I will talk to you later.